Oh. <coughs> okay, good morning. So we are at um, conceptual knowledge. So that's the topic that we're going to be talking about for today. Okay, so after um, the uh, successive chapters in uh, on memory, um, we now go to this particular chapter. Now, what are the questions that we are going to uh, ask for this uh, chapter? Okay, so we have... Okay, so some of the questions to consider for this chapter is uh, are the following. So the first one, why is it difficult to decide if a particular object belongs to a particular category such as a chair um, by looking it up through its definition? <coughs> then next is uh, how are the properties of various objects filed away in the mind? And then lastly, how is information about different categories <coughs> stored in the brain? Okay, so when we talk about uh, conceptual knowledge, it enables us to recognize objects and events and to make inferences about their properties. So uh, this is very important because <coughs> if we don't have the the conceptual knowledge higher level um yeah higher levels of thinking will not happen like for example because uh with um decision making and judgment how will you decide and how you how will you make a judgment on a certain object if you don't understand um what the object is or what even the object is for diba? so <clears throat> you wouldn't really know how to process it for uh, for later if you don't have any idea um, as to what to do about it and then the uh, next one <coughs> concept so the concept is the mental representation wait let's just use the laser pointer again the concept is the um, conce uh, the mental representation used for a variety of cognitive functions. So, ito nga yung sabi ko kanina, di ba? If you don't have the conceptual knowledge, meaning the mental representation of that object, like for example, we have the concept of chair. <clears throat> now, with the concept of chair, since you understand or since we understand what the chair is for, um, once we see the chair, we will be able to decide on what to do uh, about it, right? So we will decide uh, to sit on it, sit on it um, in different positions. Like for example, um, <coughs> nakaupo tayo ng ano, na nakataas ang paa, nakaupo tayo na uh, medyo naka side view, but we're still... Um, we're still doing it uh, we're still doing these actions based on what we know is the um, the fundamental function of what a chair is and then <clears throat> we also have the concept of categorization now the categorization this is the process by which things are placed into groups which are called categories now um, <clears throat> uh, this is something that we do not only with uh, things that we are familiar with we do this almost every day like for example when we um yeah when we fold our clothes the mga bagong labang damit natin we we fold them according to category so lahat ng uh, top or lahat ng shirts pagsasama-samahin natin lahat ng um, pants or shorts magkakasama lahat ng underwear magkakasama and um, by putting them together by categorizing these clothes in such a way it would be easier for us to place them where they are where they 
should be placed. So, ganun din, basically, yung concepts natin. So, malalaman natin yan in a bit, uh, what am I talking about with this one? Okay. Now, ayan. Why are categories useful? Now, again, to, um, to reiterate, uh, categorization of uh, the concepts or the objects that we uh, encounter will help us better understand uh, things, especially those which we did not encounter previously. Like for example, the <coughs> Um, di ba pag nag-online nag shopping tayo and then sa online shopping meron silang tinatawag na um, mystery box, right? And then dahil meron kang extra money to spend, you decided to buy that mystery box. And then inside that box, you have something or they have something that is not familiar to you. Di ba? So parang um, <clears throat> May nakita ka na mga items for cellphone. Uh, so, hiniwalay mo siya. May nakita kang para mga uh, fish din. So, you would categorize it as another uh, item for cellphone. <clears throat> and then, you saw um, something like... Um, something shaped like this. Like, wait, that's ano. Let's make <clears throat> yeah, something in good shape like this. For example, this one. Sorry for the bad drawing. Um, okay. Something shaped like that and it's white. Let's say this is colored white. Um so, you have like five pieces of that and you're thinking, ano to? Para saan ko to gagamitin? And then, <clears throat> niisip mo lang iniisip, ano nga ba yan? Para saan nga ba? Pag hindi mo siya nakategorize, um, do you know what to do with it? Would you have an idea on how to use it? Okay, so if your answer is no, yes, definitely that's correct. Kasi nga, um, first off, you don't know what it is for. So, kaya hindi mo siya mailagay, ah, this is for cell phone, this is for um, clothes or my hair. Kasi nga, again, it's a mystery box, di ba? Um, so, if you don't understand para saan yan, will you be able to decide on it? So, again, hindi. Kasi nga, hindi mo alam kung anong function niya. Ni, hindi mo nga alam kung anong tawag sa kanya, right? So, um, by categorizing things, we're able to slowly comprehend uh, para saan to, anong ginagawa niya, etc., etc. Mamaya sabihin ko sa inyo kung ano yan. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Basically, categories are, are useful because they give us um, information about an item. And it allows us to identify special characteristics of that particular item. So, like for example, this is a picture of a cat, right? So, with the categorization that we give for the cat, what are the things or how were we able to categorize it? Okay, so I'll give you some some minute to think about it. Okay, so what have you seen in um what have you seen with its uh, descriptions? Okay, so some of the descriptions are about its um, characteristics like it has whis whiskers physical characteristics right some descriptions are about his um, species like this one it is a feline and are related to lions and tigers another one about his characteristics um, the cat of course meows and purrs and then about its behavior, yeah, likes to rub up against people and other objects. 
so that is one of its behavior another behavior would be sleeps a lot but more active at night and then another behavior would be difficult to train and then for the activities we can see that the cat is given a description to like fish and milk as well as um, catching mice so we can say uh, that there are pretty much three categories for this particular cat and um understanding or putting these categories on the cat we're able to understand better what does a cat do okay so we have several approaches to how we categorize things. So the first one is the definitional approach. With the definitional approach, it allows us to determine the membership based on whether the object meets the definition of the category. So um, basically, we're just defining it. Um, and with this particular approach, it was said that it doesn't really work well. Um, and uh, this is because not all the members of everyday categories have the, de the same defining features. Um, like for example, with birds, there are uh, species, there are particular species or particular categories of birds that... Um, doesn't really fit the how we define what birds are so major tricky and then of course with family resemblance uh, items in the category resemble one another in a number of ways yes they do have similarities but not all uh, members of that uh, family or um, yeah species within that family fit the uh, features okay so when we say chair we define it as something that is to be seated on right so we can define it as a piece of uh, furniture that is used to be seated on so are everyone would you consider everything in this picture a chair okay now i so the first one is a blue um chair does it fit the definition of a chair i think yes um the b part does it fit the definition of a chair yes okay c part does it fit the definition of a chair okay also yes the D picture does it fit the definition of the a chair okay so I think some of you are saying yes and some of you are saying no in this case yes it does fit the definition of a chair if we're just basing the definition on uh, its use right so we can say that this rock formation can be a chair however is it the same as the other three or does it have the same feature as the other three no right so um this is why they say that uh, this type of approach is not always um helpful or it doesn't work all the time because of the fact that not all will um not all will fit the definition <clears throat> and then next up we have uh, the prototype approach now the prototype approach we have an average representation of what a typical member of a category is like for example a bird so when we say that uh, something is a bird we would have um, the basic uh, picture or we would have an, a mental image of how we 
uh, how we understand what a bird is. <clears throat> Okay, now um, all of these have the characteristics or they have a specific feature that would describe what a member of that concept are like. So like for example, with the idea or with the prototype of a bird, so can we say that all of these birds have beak? Okay, so facing from the picture, yes. Do they have two feet? Okay, so I think yes. Yung, ito nga lang hindi kita. But the rest kita siya. Do they have wings? Okay, again, meron naman. Um, hindi lang kita uh, with this one and also with this one. Okay. Do they have eyes? Yes, based on the picture. And uh, do they have feathers? Yes, also basing from the picture. So, um, from the pictures uh, that we are seeing, we can say that ah, these are all birds because they uh, fit the prototype of what an average bird looks like for us. Average meaning to say, um, <clears throat> does it uh, or is it the same for everyone? Okay. <clears throat> so, paano natin nabubuo yun, yung idea na yun about the birds? We are able to, um, we are able to have that idea or conceptualize that idea from the average category members encountered in the past. Like, for example, uh, this is also why uh, let me insert here just some idea from the website diba? this is why um, children are really encouraged to go out and play so that the dami din yung kanilang experiences and that um, the, the concepts that they would uh, develop or that they would um, encounter or experience from the environment would also be uh, higher <clears throat> okay okay so um, in a rush uh, experiment um, in 1975 uh, he had participants judge an object on a scale of 1 to 7, 1 being good example of a category and 7 being a poor example of the category. Now, uh, he had them rate um, birds and uh, furniture. So, kung makikita natin, um, ang pinarate niya na concepts are the following. So, for the bird, meron siyang bat, penguin, owl, and sparrow, okay? And then for the furniture, he had the telephone, the mirror, the china closet, and the chair or sofa. Now, kung makikita natin, uh, among the four, for the bird, the bat was said to be the least uh, or the, the poor, poor example of a bird. Now, bakit kaya? Okay, so try and think, bakit kaya hindi po pwede si bat? Okay, what about penguin? Penguins are said to be also birds, but it doesn't really, it, it didn't even ha uh, scored high um, as a good example. Hindi man lang siya napunta dito sa 3 or uh, 2 na scale. Um, it's uh, between 5 and 4. Okay, so again, bakit kaya? And then of course, we have the owl. So, bakit si owl or owl ay nandito? Bakit wala siya dito? Uh, among the four, the owl seems to be the one that really resembles the bird based on how we described it earlier. Okay, and lastly, 
The Spiral. The Spiral is rated to be the good example of that category, uh, with a score or with an average of 1.18. Now, again, ano bang meron kay Spiral na wala dito sa tatlo? And anong meron? Si Bat, si Penguin, and si Owl, uh, which um, led them to have this uh, number of score. Okay, so moving on with the furniture. Now, with the furniture, ang my binigyan or ang binigyan nila ng highest score in terms of being a good example in the, in that category was the chair and sofa at 1.04. So perfect na dapat siya. And then the phone being at 6.68. Okay. Now, when we talk about furnitures, um, we can define furnitures as things that are used at home, right? So, anong meron si telephone, anong meron si mirror, and anong meron si china closet that made them score like this? Anong meron kay chair na wala sa rest of the group? Okay, so <clears throat> why is it considered the the best? Why are these two considered uh, the best examples for the category that we are talking about? Okay, so a uh, category member clo that closely resembles the category is said to have uh, to have a high prototypicality. So. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say, the more typical it is, the highest its prototypicality. So, for the category of birds, we would have a robin um, <coughs> score the highest in this category. However, may cultural ano dito, may cultural uh, problem tayo dito. Um, <coughs> Okay, since we, uh, I don't think we have, do we have a robin here in the Philippines? Okay, so siguro gawin natin siyang uh, Maya, di ba? So, among the, the Maya, the, um, the Kalapati, and the uh, Agila, kung yun yung mga pictures na ginamit natin kanina, um, <clears throat> Which one would you rate to have the high prototypicality? Okay. And which one would you rate to have low uh, prototypicality? So, with the low prototypicality, the category member does not resemble the category prototype. So, in this case, ang, <clears throat> ang example niya ay penguin. So, why penguin? Why not other? Um, <clears throat> um, why why is it not uh, really fitting the category or how we describe what an, uh, or what a bird is? Okay. So, from the study, they were able to see that there is a strong positive relationship between uh, the prototypicality and the family resemblance. So, um, the more uh, similar it is to the uh, prototype, like it's, for example, a bird, the higher its prototypicality. So, ganun po sila. Um, Pag, uh, the more na nag-fit siya sa idea natin kung anong itsura ng bird, anong itsura ng mesa, anong itsura ng upuan, the more na mas mataas ang prototypicality niya para sa atin. So, items in a category that have large amount of overlap have high family resemblance. So, like for example, yung mga upuan kanina, di ba? The, the chairs of A, B, the two have high prototypicality and then yung chair na C and of course the 
they don't really have uh, a lot of resemblance. Ang magkamukha magkamukha doon or have a close similarity would be chairs A and B. Whereas with chairs uh, C and D, uh, they have low overlap or low family resemblance. Okay. Now, the um, with this one, we have what we call the typicality e effect wherein the prototypical objects are processed preferentially. So, um, the more we are familiar or the, the more we have this idea of how it looks like, the more we respond to it, to that object better. Um, yeah. So, from the, the work of Smith and his colleagues, they were able to see that high, highly prototypical objects were judged more rapidly. And in the um, experiment of Roche, uh, prototypical objects are named more rapidly as well. Prototypical category, uh, category members are more affected by a priming stimulus like for example here in green primes a highly pro prototypical green okay so let's see uh, a result from the the experiment of smith so this is um yeah, so prototypicality in the x-axis, we have the high, the medium, and the low. And this is the reaction time or re the response time in millisecond. Now, as we can see, the, the fruit or the word apple has high prototypicality and the response rate is faster as compared with the fruit of promangrenate. Okay? which has a low prototypicality and has a slower response rate with, uh, I think, a difference of 100 millisecond. Now, why do you think this was the result? Okay, so it may be because we are more familiar with the word apple or people are more familiar with the word apple than the word promangrenate uh, itself. Like for example, when we are being taught the, <coughs> the alphabet, A is for apple, um, And then with B, we rarely see promangrenate as a promangrenate. I'm, I'm putting an R <laughs> after the P. Okay, so we rarely uh, see this fruit being used as an example for the letter uh, P. Right? So, the, the familiarity is low. So, that's why when we think about it, right? I'm sure uh, some of you are taking a second thinking, ano ba itsura nung uh, pumanginate na sinasabi ni ma'am? No? So, it's a citrus fruit. Uh, nasa family siya ng mga citrus if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so, sana tama ako with this one. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, with the, uh, with another uh, result from the experiment of Rush and his colleague, uh, ito naman yung priming. So, nakita nila na pag sinabi mo, okay, so green. So, point out which are the colors that shows green. Okay. So, nakita niya, or nakita nila na people automatically pointed out this one. This pair. Okay. Why? Because even um, here, just by hearing it, we know that um, the color green should be like this. And not like this. Although we still know that this is still green, however, we know that it's not the best representative of what color green is. Okay, so I hope you're still with me. Okay, so this is, this might, uh, or this can also help us understand better, right? 
um, when when we are at home, this is na nani natin. Hanapin mo nga yung um, yung pula kong ganto, yung pula kong t-shirt, and then you would be looking at several shirts with different tones of red, di ba? So, <laughs> sabihin mo, maaalin dito ang pulang t-shirt, ano yung pulang t-shirt dito? And then, sabi niya, yung ano, yung, basta yung pula. Usually, when we are given those uh, vague answer, we would just get the one that's, that's the best red that we know. So, ganun, uh, ganun nag-work yung utak natin. Sab sabi mo, pula, di ba? Or sabi mo itim, sabi mo uh, pute, yung mga ganon. So, um, we, we are primed and uh, usually when we are primed like that, we get the best um, thing that we know is the prototype of that particular uh, concept. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so with this one, we can see in this picture, ayan. So, good match for a prototype of green would be the B. Ayan, narinig niya word na green. Automatically, the, the participant chose the B pair rather than the C pair. Okay, so, and um, this has a, a faster response rate. As compared with the other pairs of color, may may dara pa dito de ba yung hindi talaga green. I think that's blue and red, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, then we also have the exemplar approach. Now the exemplar approach in <clears throat> categorization and the concept is represented by multiple examples rather than having a single prototype kasi nga ang prototypical uh, sige let's just recap very quickly the definition type is we're just really defining it we're categories uh, categorizing the object or the concept based on how it is defined and then we also have the prototypical approach or the prototype approach wherein we the the object is um um or we we recognize or we understand what the concept is based on its prototype uh, per se and the higher its resemblance to the prototype the more uh, or the faster we get familiar with that uh, particular object <clears throat> okay now ayan ito namang uh, approach na to mas marami kang example and uh, the examples are actually category members and not abstract average and like with the prototype just sabi niya what uh, uh, so we're looking for a bird so the ba yung sabi mo bird uh, ah so may beak may uh, dalang paa may pakpak may feathers tas nangingitlog at lumilipad so that is the abstract average that we have for um, a bird uh, which is a prototype for the exemplar approach mga object talaga, specific object yung pinapakita niyang category. And um, by doing that, ayan, to categorize, compare the new item to the stored example. So, um, like for example, yung drinawing ko kanina, so, uh, let's, uh, let's draw it again. So, this one, ah, wait na. Right click ako, sorry. So, this one and this one. So, that's how it looks like, ha? Ganyan. A made out of plastic. Nakita mo sa Lazada mystery box mo. Okay. And then, nakita mo yung Velcro. Velcro snap mo na pang uh, ano ng cord or hindi velcro yung wire lang na pang ayos ng cord mo pang organize ng cord mo and then nakita mo yung my uh, let's say star na cord organizer mo din hmm Ayan. So, kuwari, star siya. Okay. 
at saka ano yun yung drawing ko ha ang hirap pag explain ng ganito okay so kuhari ganyan siya and then nakita mo ah may resemblance to dito so you're comparing it uh, this one to this one <coughs> uh, to these two and then from that comparison you're able to categorize this thing na kanina mo pa iniisip ano nga ba yan para saan nga ba yan as uh, a chord organizer okay so uh, how is this approach similar with the prototype uh, view so it's similar because it represents a category and it it's not just a definition of the group so unlike the the first approach diba? however the difference from the prototype view is that Again, the representation is not abstract, so we're not merely giving out na a bird is something that flies, a bird is something that lays egg, it's something that blah, 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 blah. So, we don't really have um, a tangible representation of what a bird is, but rather we're just being given uh, the features of a bird. And then, uh, with the exemplar approach, meron kang specific na example talaga. So, like for example, yung kanina nga, na binigay ko sa inyo yung drawing ng uh, chord um, organizer. So, uh, I know the drawing is bad, but I do hope you understand uh, where where I'm getting at. So, um, so the more similar a specific sampler is known to a category, uh, to a known category member, the faster it will be categorized. And this is called the family resemblance effect. So, katulad ng mga chairs kanina. Teka, balikan natin yung mga chairs. Okay. Okay. So, katulad nito, we are, we all know, so this can uh, be uh, within the exemplar approach kasi may nakikita tayong specific na itsura ng upuan. di ba? And then, kaya nga pagdating sa D, diba, may mga ibang na ano sa inyo, o oh, hindi naman upuan yun eh, pero if we're going to go with the definitional approach, yes, it may be a chair, right? But with the exemplar approach, definitely D would not fall in the category of a chair. Kasi nga, in terms of, of the the presentation or representation, it doesn't really fit our mental image of what a chair is. Okay, so balik tayo doon sa Okay, asa na siya? Yan. Okay, and a good thing about this um, this approach is that it explains the typicality effect better na uh, this is what a typical chair looks like this is what a typical bird looks like and um it also easily takes into account the atypical cases like for example the case of the penguin diba we know that the penguin is a bird it's a type of a bird however it's a type of a bird that doesn't fly it's a type of a bird that doesn't really have feathers per se um, but it do fits the category in terms of it has a beak, it has two feet, um, it has, uh, it, it lays egg, yun lang, it doesn't fly. And it also allows us to deal with variable categories, meaning to say that the smaller or the other uh, <coughs> distinct <coughs> categorization uh, group. Okay, so what's the best approach to use? Okay. So, exemplars are seen to work best with small categories. Like, for example, uh, chair. Diba? It has a... Um, <clears throat> it's a small category na... Uh, no matter what it looks like, we know that it's a chair, right? May sandalan, wala, uh, apat, or tatlo yung paa, or dalawalang, uh, for as long as we know na we it, it will be able to hold our weight or hold the weight of the, the seater. 
again it's a it's a chair <coughs> whereas with the prototype ap uh, approach it works best for a larger categories like for example you must species ng birds species ng uh, fish species ng mammals so these are um these are groups of categories that will work best when you use the prototype approach kasi nga by using this approach you're um we're just giving abstract um abstract representation but we understand ano yung mga dapat magbilong doon sa category na yun. <clears throat> now, how do we organize things? So, we organize things uh, by using hierarchical organization. And uh, this is how uh, people categorize things. So, um, by doing that, we uh of course consider the properties of the object and then as um, the learning and experience of the perceivers as well so yeah katulad na to, we can see that there are three levels in this organization so we have the global or the superordinate the basic and then the specific or the subordinate okay now for the basic we have um, concepts like a chair table bed or car truck and bicycle for the global we have furniture and bicycle and then for the specific we have kitchen uh, dining room kitchen uh, table dining room table single double uh, for chevy pickup van uh, road and trail so um, understanding it better, diba? the basic level, as according to Roche, is psychologically privileged. Um, so, what, what do we mean by this one? Okay, tignan natin, susunod. Okay. So, with that being said, what was found out was uh, the basic level actually is a special level. Okay, bakit? From their experiment, they were able to see um, if the participants go above the basic level, like for example, pupunta sila sa global level, the, the tendency is that they lose a lot of information, okay? And then, if they go below the basic level, the tendency is they gain a little information. So, like for example, di ba pag, uh, pag utusan tayo ng nanay natin, sabihin, um, they usually, we, we usually actually go with just the basic level. Sabihin ng nanay mo, kunin mo yung cellphone ko, Saan? Diyan sa mesa. Um, when we are uh, ordered to do a chore or when we are or ordered to do an errand, they use or we use the basic level. Walang nagsasabi sa atin na um, kunin mo yung cellphone sa furniture. Diba? Anong furniture? Ang daming furniture. Nasa bahay tayo. So, therefore, ang daming furniture. And then, very rare din as sabi ng nanay mo, kuwari, nasa kitchen kayo, kunin mo yung uh, cellphone ko dyan sa kitchen table. Eh, nasa kitchen na nga kayo. So, nandun na yung nanay mo, bakit niya pa yung utos yun, di ba? So, you would gain little information from that. Whereas, pag sinabi niya, um, kunin mo yung cellphone ko dyan sa table, you would know na nasa mesa yon. And, hindi yon sa kitchen. Otherwise, bakit niya pinapakuha? ba? And, of course, specific yung lugar na sinabi niya. The table nga, yung pagkukuhaan mo. Hindi basta furniture. Kasi, pag furniture, baka kama yun. Baka upuan yun. ba? Baka vanity table niyo yun. Etc. Etc. Okay. So, um... Another experiment was done to see how special the basic uh, level is. So, buti pa siya, special. 
char. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so, the experiment of Tanaka and Taylor, uh, they have um, the the blue bar is the, are the exper uh, experts, sorry, and the orange bar are the non-experts. So, what they have seen here is that for the experts, they were only able to uh, give the basic responses at, uh, I think, 25, uh, below 50%. However, when it comes to specific responses, they were able to give out uh, more than a 50. So, I think uh, about 80-70%. Whereas, with the, uh, with the non-experts, kumakita natin, mas madami silang naibigay na responses doon sa basic na level. <clears throat> uh, whereas, with the sp uh, specific, yan, mababa. Uh, I think, siguro nasa 20% lang to. Ito siguro 30. Okay. So, um, experts are seen, of course, to use more specific categories to name birds, whereas non-experts use more basic categories. So, in the same way, pag graduate na kayo, ba? So, um, when we... You will be able to be, uh, or you will be considered as experts in mental health. So, therefore, you would know if it's anxiety or depression, right? Whereas, with the non-expert, the, the people who, uh, who do not have any training in psychology would be just calling it um, mental health problem or sabi niya, ah, anxiety yan when uh, it is in fact depression or vice versa ay uh, depression yan when it is um, anxiety okay now moving on to the semantic uh, works so <clears throat> ah, networks sorry so with the semantic networks the concepts are arranged this is how the brain actually files the things that we learn or the concepts that we learn so the concepts are arranged uh, in a way that represents um, organized concepts in the mind. So, uh, from the proposal of Collins and Killian, okay, they have the node as the most basic uh, unit. Um, and the node uh, represents the category or the concept itself. And then these nodes are linked together and then from that linkages they will be able to form a specific network and uh, the model or this network again um, this allows us to see how um, the concepts and properties of these concepts are are associated or organized together in our mind okay so now we're seeing here um the networks the semantic network of a living thing so it started with the node of living thing and then uh, it branched out to this living thing can grow a living thing is of course living and then from this one yeah categorization all that there are plants and then there are animals um then we say a plant is a plant because it has roots an animal is an animal because it has it can move it has skin or fur or okay and then under the node of plant uh, we have the tree and the flower under the node of uh, animal we have the bird and we have fish okay so kung makikita nyo, as it gets down to um, a more specific level the network becomes more and more complex right so, ito, et, going back doon sa um, organization, this would be the global uh, level. Uh, then, the, the basic category, depending on which node you are looking at, uh, in this case, we would say that this would be the basic category. Okay. So, 
in the semantic networks we have uh, what we call the cognitive economy wherein shared properties are only stored at a higher level nodes um, and then there are exceptions which are usually seen in the lower level nodes so like for example this one wait lang and again shared properties that are uh, stored at the higher level nodes so this one higher level nodes okay lower level nodes yeah so may mga exceptions na nakikita natin dito so like for example eto the bird kung nandyan si nandyan si penguin diba and then eto yung mga kasama niya doon magkakaroon ng um, and then ang mga nakalagay uh, a bird is uh, lays egg and flies ayan as a feather ganyan tapos nilagay mo si penguin dito sa baba so yeah doon naman makikita na at ah, penguin is an exception pala okay so, with this one, um, we can see the response time here. Levels to be traversed, meaning to say from the, uh, one idea to another. So, from level 0 to 2. And then, the blue line is the property. The red line is the category. So, like for example, talking about the um, canary. So, canary is a specific type of bird. And, greater distances are associated with longer reaction times when verifying statements both about the properties of canaries and about categories of which the canary is a member. Uh, <clears throat> so, kung makikita natin, ayan, uh, between the property and category of the canary regarding uh, if it's uh, if it can fly and if it's a bird, the level to be traversed is uh, very short uh, based from the re response time or the reaction time. And then from this idea to this idea, medyo malaki ang kanilang gap. The same here. Yeah. Yun yung uh, lumabas na results from this experiment. Okay. Okay. When we spread activation or when uh, activation happens, this is the arousal level of a node. So, when a node is activated, activity spreads around, ab all, all, out all along its connected links. Concepts that receive activation are primed and more easily accessed from memory. So, like for example, kanina, diba, sabi ko, what do you think a bird is? So, I was already priming you in order to activate the node that you have connected for the birds. So, pretty sure a lot of you have um, thought of uh, the Maya, the brown bird that we usually see outside, diba, yung may ingay sa umaga. Uh, Every every morning and afternoon, and dami niya dito sa mga ano, kable sa may tapat ng bahay namin. And then there are, uh, this is why uh, there are some of my recordings that you were here. Uh, birds chirping, <laughs> sila yon. So, pretty sure na uh, a lot of you have thought of this uh, brown bird when we were talking about the bird earlier. Okay. So, how activation can spread throughout a network? So, this is that figure that shows us the priming. And, uh, of course, this one would um, be this, the one spreading activation. Okay. So, from a robin to bird, uh, the dash line indicate activation. Okay, concepts which have become primed are easier to retrieve from memory because of the spreading activation. So, 
when we say the word uh yun, kanina din, so i i primed you pretty much in terms of thinking of uh, the maya as a bird right however instead of thinking of it immediately as an animal so kung makikita natin just like with this one you would think of oh, what would be yung mga kamag-anak ni maya so you pretty much some of you would think kayapati um other other types of birds na mas similar sa kanya instead of going directly doon sa idea na ah the bird is an animal so um although ma, ma, ma mapupunta ka din sa part na yon ng network it's uh, it's not easily accessed and like the idea here of the canary <clears throat> Okay, now, going to the lexical decision task. Ayan, participants read stimuli and are asked to say as quickly as possible whether the item is a word or not. Okay, so the uh, experiment of uh, Mayer and Shna Shbanet uh, well, pinaktis ko to na ilang araw pero hanggang ngayon hindi ko pa rin siya masabi. Shbanet Welt, Schwane, Welt. Okay, so I think this is German. Um, yes, it. Um, so they made an experiment wherein the participants will say yes if both strings are words and no if not. And uh, what they see is that the reaction time was faster for a closely uh, related or associated pairs. So, yeah, words associated, words that are not associated. So, kung makikita natin, mas matagal yung reaction time based on how long it took for the participants to respond. Whereas, the words or the pairs that are associated together or connected with each other, it took a shorter response rate. However, of course, just like uh, the other theories or ideas that we have been talking about in uh, this particular subject, there are, of course, uh, limitations in the model of Collins and Killan, um, Killan study. So, una una is that it cannot really um, explain the typicality effects. So, bakit may ganong tayong um, idea na parang why how can we form what is typical with the objects or the concepts that we experience and uh, how do we know that it's not typical as well and then of course the cognitive economy it's not that um expounded on so it's a bit difficult to understand for other and of course it's still a, a, a bit mysterious and then of course some sentence verification results are quite problematic for the model meaning to say it doesn't really fit the model that they have uh, made okay so we have this one as well the connectionist approach wherein um creating computer models for representing cognitive processes there are a parallel distributed processing and knowledge represented um, in the distributed activity has many units so weights determine each uh, at each connection how strong strongly an incoming signal would activate the next unit okay so this one again this is a quite complex model but um, let's say for example uh, yeah, the word bird so I will connect to this one connect to this one and this one and this one as well so makikita natin that there are lines that are bolder uh, as compared to other lines ito yung strong connection unit na sinasabi niya so this is the weight of the connection na let's say uh, in our case, we have the idea of Maya. So, you would understand na, ah, ibon yan. Ah, may ano yan. So, let's say here, ah, ibon yan. Kamag-anak yan ng agila. 
So, hindi ganon ka-strong yung link niya. Kasi nga, hindi ganon kataas yung weight nung connection of Maya to uh, an eagle. Okay. So, the units in a parallel uh, distributed processing network, we have three. So, the input units which are activated by stimulation from the environment. Like, for example, nakakita ka nga ng Maya. Ayan siya. Okay, the hidden units which receive input from inputs, uh, input units, and then the output units which receive input from the hidden units. So, ayan, ito yung mas more complex uh, for this particular approach. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so... Like, for example, ayan. So, let's say this is a Maya. Imbis na canary, no? Kasi, para mas makarelate tayo. Kasi may cultural uh, problems tayo dito. Kung, uh, I keep on saying canary, canary, and then some of you doesn't really have an idea of what the canary looks like, right? So, so we have the concept of the Maya, and then representation, punta tayo dito. Yan. Property, living thing siya. So, di ba nakikita natin sobrang complex nung uh, arrow lines. And then, relation. Ito yung hidden niya. Yes, it's a living thing. Uh, and then, titignan mo um, ano siya. Uh, ibon siya. Pero, relation can ano siya. Can what? Can sing, can fly. Okay, can grow, can move, etc., etc. So, that's how we would understand uh, what a Maya is. <clears throat> yeah. So, the shading indicates the activity of more units with a darker shading indicating more activity. Um, note that only few of the units and connections that would be activated by, uh, by canary or in our case Maya and can um are shown as being activated so yeah dito baba siya dito sa part na to yung pula lang uh, papansinin natin in relation with the canary no okay ayan ito here or here and then ito yung pula Happy natin can sing, can fly, <clears throat> so on and so forth. Okay. But when looking at it in the actuality or in uh, putting it in this approach, we can see that there are many networks or units that are activated, which is the word canary. It just so happens that the other units are not going to be used. <coughs> <coughs> excuse, are not going to be used um, with how you thought of it or for the particular um, experience or particular uh, thing that you need to use it. Okay, now, how does learning occurs? So, the networks respond to a stimulus. So, katulad nga nung kanina, nakakita, or pwede nakakita ka ng ibon, may, sinabi, may nagsabi sa iyo, nakita mo ba yung ibon yung ganon? And, um, um, they are provided or we are provided with a correct response and um, it, uh, it happens when uh, we, we have a modified responding to match the correct response so <clears throat> going back with your dev site this is how uh, pretty much children learn na uh, kaya diba, when, when they are first learning about things like, for example, um, the cat and the dog, a lot of, uh, a lot of children tend to mistake cats uh, as dog and vice versa. Kasi nga, lalo na, uh, katalang mga pamangkin ko kasi, uh, uh, my, my niece and nephew grew up um, with dogs around them. So, so, they have more dogs than cats. Whereas, kami naman dito sa bahay, mas marami kaming pusa kaysa sa aso. 
Actually, we don't own any dogs. Mas ano kami, uh, cat people ang mga nandito sa bahay. So, whenever they would go here, or, or the first time that they came here, mga toddler pa sila, um, akala nila yung mga pusa namin ay aso. Kasi nga, for their concept, or the idea that they have it matches the idea that they have of a dog so so when we when they tried playing with some of our cats at the time we still have three cats they were calling the cat over <laughs> uh, with how they call the dog so so yeah kinakorek namin sila na no it's a cat not a dog so you call a you call them with not ano, yung uh, pan ba yung sa aso, yung chu-chu-chu di ba, parang gano'n sa aso yung tawag natin so, um, then later on ayun, na-modify na nila in order to correct how they should respond um, when, whenever they see a cat and, and also a dog so, that is how they learned, or that's how we learn okay now, error signal, ayan, uh, this is the difference between actual activity of each output unit and the correct activity. We also have the concept of back propagation, error signals trans transmitted back to the circuit, parang, kumbaga, bumabalik siya, kumbaga, instead of going here, it's going back there, uh, when uh, the back propagation happens. So, it indicates how weights should be changed to allow output signal to match the correct signal. And then, the process repeats until the zero signal, uh, the zero, the error signal is zero. So, kumbaga yung, yung line na uh, ganito niya, okay, teka, drawing ulit ako. Diba, like, say for example, ganito siya. So, back propagation, oops, teka, balik tayo, mali, 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 mali. And then, uh, paulit-ulit yon hanggang sa yung line niya, hindi na siya ganun kabigat, ganun na lang siya. And then, sa tama na siya pupunta, let's say, ganun na siya. Instead of just going um, straight line, ayan, pupunta na siya sa tamang lugar. Okay. So, this would be a good um, depiction of the learning con uh, learning and the connectionist networks so the bars represent the activity and the uh, eight representation units and notice the pattern of activation um, changes as learning progresses so kung makikita natin ayan, at first at zero yan halos nasa baba yung bars hidden units and these are the learning trials so the learning trials we can see na tumataas and tumataas yung hidden units and until a specific connection are just being stimulated pagdating sa pinakamataas na part so meaning to say nagkakaroon na ng correction dito dito sa mga error so in this first um, in, in this first uh, activity makikita natin na medyo madaming error kasi nga nag, nagpo-form parang ng connection eh diba? and then yung sec um, yeah, so, uh, second trial kasi this is the first trial second set of trials we can see that ayan, from this point bumaba na siya so we can say na nagko-correct siya the same here, medyo pababa na siya. And then finally, just a final uh, set ng trials, yan. Ganun na siya. Okay. So, the support for connectionism. So, there is a graceful uh, degradation. Performance disruption occurs gradually as parts of the system are damaged. So, the network, the, the good idea, of, or the good thing about this uh, approach is that the network, the idea is that the network operation is not totally disrupted by the damage. And <clears throat> we can see this doon nga sa mga patients na nagkakaroon ng problema sa so, brain nila. Like for example, when, when we talk about amnesia, di ba? Um, 
some parts of the brain are not really able to recollect things or recall things however when they see things that they are familiar with they immediately know na ah that's a bird that's a chair so this is what i should do with it so um that kind of reaction or that kind of behavior shows us that the network operation is not totally damaged and this also gives us the explanation for the generalization of learning wherein uh, training the system uh, to recognize properties of one concept provides information about um, uh, related concepts and this is similar to human uh, learning process so <clears throat> Then next, we have the sensory functional hypothesis, wherein the different brain areas may be specialized to process information about different categories. So, uh, for this one, we have the ball dissociation for categories of living things and non-living things. And uh, there is what we call the category-specific memory impairment. So... For the sensory functional hypothesis, uh, living things equals sensory properties, properties, artifacts are uh, connected with functions. So, katulad nito with uh, the experiment or the study seen with uh, patients Casey and EW, both to whom who had category specific memory impairment, they were able to correctly name pictures of non-living things, ayan, <clears throat> and fruits and vegetables, um, but performed poorly when asked to name pictures of animals. So, yung hindi gumagalaw na name nila ng maayos, pero yung um, gumagalaw ayon mababa performance nila so this is what um, this is an evidence of the sensory functional hypothesis na again yan mas naiintindihan pag nagkaroon tayo ng problem dun sa area ng brain na yon mas naiintindihan natin yung functions per se however when um, we have to perceive them using uh, sensory properties of course, seeing them, hearing them do things, uh, because these are living things, then hindi na siya masyado nare-recognize or di na natin siya masyadong na-intindihan. Na, na ano yan? <clears throat> okay. So, there are specific neural circuits for specific categories. So, this is the result of the hot experiment and his co-workers in which the participants listen to stories in a scanner words that are activated um, so the a part shows us the words that are activated in the different places on the cortex <clears throat> and the b picture shows us the close-up of a smaller area of the cortex so we can see but i'm just looking at it in this way we can see that there is a lot of greens here. Ayan. Note that a particular area usually responds to a different uh, number of different words as uh, seen in the next figure. Okay. Okay, so the distributed representation, ayan, this explains to us how concepts are divided within a category. So, animals, we use motion and color. Artifacts, we use um, actions like, for example, anong function niya, how do we use them, etc., etc. And then, crowding happens when different concepts within category share many properties. So, like, for example, animals all share eyes, legs, and the ability to move. So, this is why for children, of course, um, it, it takes a while for them to learn some of the animals kasi nga, um, or they tend to confuse like for example yung mga, yung mga pamangkin ko they had confused uh, the dogs or the, their dogs with our cats because of the, the crowding um, <clears throat> effect so to speak 
So, next up, we have the embodied approach. So, the knowledge co of concept is based on the reactivation of sensory and motor processes that occur when we interact with that object. And then, with that one, we have, of course, the mirror neurons, which we have discussed in the earlier um, chapters. Uh, so, this fire, when we do a task or when we observe another one doing that same task. And then, a semantic somat Totopi, som somatotopy correspond between the words related to a specific body part and the location of the brain activation. So like for example, um, sinabi na uh, run. So of course, mag, uh, mag -re respond yung legs mo kasi uh, no other body part does that particular function. And of course, um, the the brain or uh, the brain part that is connected with that will be activated. So a good example would be this. Colored areas indicate the areas of the brain uh, activated by foot, finger, tongue, uh, movement, uh, B, leg, arm, and face words. So, so the blue part, this is where Yan, pag sabi, oh, galawin mo yung paa mo, ayan, yung nag-activate. Finger movements are also here. So, kung makikita natin halos lahat ng dito sa gitna, no? Okay? Now, kung yung sinasabi lang yung action words, leg words like uh, run, uh, cough, finger, uh, a toast, ex um, etc. May kita natin na may, may ibang part ng brain na nagla-light up and it's not the part that were lighting up when uh, the movement was happening. Okay, alisin ko nga ito nakalito. Okay, so um, this is another uh, way to see how it happens in the brain and red are action words, yellow are sound words, green are motion words, blue are uh, Blue are color words and pink gustatory words. Uh, purple are emotion words. So let's say for example, um, sabi natin, uh, sweet siya or sweet yung uh, ininom ko kanina. So nawawala yung pink. So let's say uh, nandiyan siya banda. Siguro nasa likuran lang. Okay? Sabihin mo, um, kakain ako kumain ako ng breakfast or ng lunch, ng dinner. So, yeah. Dito siya sa part na yan, brain. Sound words, like for example, malakas masyado yung background noise ni Ma'am Karen. I'm sorry for that. And, uh, green, motion words would be, um, maglalakad ako mamaya, diba? So, dyan yung mga nag activate Okay, and that's it for our discussion for uh, concept knowledge. So, I do hope that you understood uh, the things that were discussed here. So, after that, of course, we have the chapter test.